So good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Sapinero. I'm the AARP Missouri Volunteer State President, and thank you for joining us today and participating in our webinar on frauds and scams. We've got just a couple of minutes before we start, uh, right at, right at uh, noon. And to kick things off, we'd like to put up a poll question for those of you that are uh, waiting. And let's put that poll question up now. Okay, so please just put in the chat box um, how you're how you're are uh, answering the poll question, or just take the poll question online here. Looks like we have uh, some St. Louis, some Kansas City, Jefferson City. Looks like we're getting most of the state covered. That's great. For those of you just joining us, uh, please feel free to take the uh, poll question on your screen. Okay, it's 12.01. Why don't we put the uh, poll results on the screen, if you could? Okay, there we go. Phishing, phishing emails. Uh, can't tell you how many phishing emails I received during the day. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm Dave Sapinero, the AARP Missouri Volunteer State President, and really want to thank you for joining us today and participating in our webinar on frauds and scams. As we approach the holidays, frauds and scams become even more common, and AARP Missouri wants you to have as much information as possible to help protect yourself and your loved ones from these fraudsters. Millions of Americans get caught up in fraudulent schemes every year, resulting in tens of billions of dollars landing in the pockets of con artists and other unsavory criminals. Without protection for us and our loved ones, our chances of joining the growing list increases dramatically. Today, we're gonna to talk about proactive measures that we can all take to protect ourselves and our families from identity theft and fraud through the AARP's Fraud Watch Network. The Fraud Watch Network is designed to give everyone access to proven tools and resources to help protect them, their families and friends from identity theft and fraud. It's free and open to everyone of any age, both AARP members and non-members alike. To sign up, you can call 877-908-3360, or you can visit our website at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. On the website, you'll find info on the latest scams, 
and have a chance to share your stories on our scam tracking map. Sadly, identity theft and other forms of fraud pose a serious threat here in Missouri. Fraud and scams cause billions of dollars in losses every year, and AARP is mounting this local campaign to fight fraud by giving you valuable information you need to fight back and keep con artists at bay. Before I turn to our guests for comments, I'd like to go over how you can ask a question uh, during our webinar today. We want this to be as interactive as possible, and after hearing uh, some opening comments from our guests, you'll have the chance to ask questions and we'll do our best to answer them. If you'd like to ask a question at any time during the webinar, please use the chat function by clicking on the speech bubble at the bottom of your Zoom window. I also want to remind you that since you're registered for this webinar, we'll be sending you a follow-up email with all the resources we talk about today. So you don't feel like you have to scramble to write down uh, website addresses and, and phone numbers and, and the like. Uh, and the webinar uh, is being recorded. And so you'll get a link that you can rewatch or maybe more importantly, share with others. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests for today's webinar. We are joined by three people who have special insight into fraudsters and the cons and scams they use to try to get our hard-earned money. Our first guest is Amy Nofziger, Director of Fraud Victim Support for AARP's Fraud Watch Network. She has over two decades of experience in fraud prevention and victim support. While at AARP, Amy has led the AARP Fraud Watch Network Helpline, a nationwide toll-free helpline for anyone to report concerns about fraud. She has also collaborated on fraud research, including multi-level marketing enterprises, best interventions for fraud and chronic victimization, and the language of fraud. She has worked with New York Times, The Today Show, CBS Evening News, Live with Kelly and Ryan, Wall Street Journal, News Nation, Good Morning America, and other outlets to help shed light on fraud and exploitation of consumers. She has a bachelor's degree in criminology, sociology, and a master of arts degree with specialization in leadership. She is also a certified fraud examiner. Amy, Amy, welcome, and we'd love to hear some comments from you. Hi, Dave and everyone. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's always funny when I hear that bio because um, I had to help put my 15-year-old uh, socks on today, right? So let's just bring it down to brass tacks, right? Um, I might know a lot about fraud, but I'm still a struggling mother out there. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I'd love to answer any questions. Um, as Dave mentioned, I manage the Fraud Watch Network helpline. We get about 400 to 500 phone calls every single day from people who are experiencing fraud or who sadly have been victims of fraud. So I certainly have my ear to the ground on the types of frauds and scams that are happening out there right now. Um, I'd love to hear your questions. Um, I'll say my philosophy is really just giving you the practical, easy tools that you can do today to set up the boundaries and the barriers, um, just like how we build a fence around our yard and maybe put an alarm in our house to protect our possessions. We need to do similar strategies when it comes to our financial security and our well-being. So thank you for having me here today, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Amy, and thank you so much for joining us. Our second guest is Lori Nelson, a certified fraud examiner and a supervisory forensic accountant for the FBI. For the first nine years of her career, she was a senior bank examiner for the Missouri Division of Finance. She then joined the United States Attorney's Office, Western District of Missouri, where she served as a financial analyst for 18 years before joining the FBI in early 2023. During her career, she has been involved in many different investigations and cases, including white collar crime, public corruption, health care fraud, fraud against the government, and narcotics investigation. She used her accounting degree and skills in detecting and analyzing business records and financial accounts, as well as assisting the agents and officers with summary exhibits and testifying in grand jury and federal trials. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Um, glad to be here. Glad to be a part of, of this uh, seminar and um, excited to see what questions everyone has today. Um, since uh, 2022, in 2022, there were over 82,000 victims over the age of 60 who reported loss to our Internet, Internet Crimes um, Bureau. This is an 84% increase over 2021. Th this really shows how the um, 
these types of scams and frauds are becoming more prevalent and something that we really need to um, be aware of and, and how to, to um, watch for. So I'm, I'm excited today to be able to get into that with everyone and, and um, go over what your concerns are and, and be able to help everyone stay safe this season. Thanks, Lori. There's no question fraud uh, is increasing. Uh, there's always there always has been fraud in society, but it seems like with technological advances over the last 20, 25 years, the fraud is just getting uh, far more complicated and far more difficult uh, to uh, to spot and to protect yourself. So I'm uh, hopefully the our audience will take advantage of your experience and ask some really good questions. So our third guest is Tracy Hawkins, who's also known as the Safety Lady who is a speaker, writer, trainer, and international content creator. Tracy has created and delivered safety and security programs in person and virtually since 1995. She hosts a highly rated safety and security podcast and regularly contributes to national and industry publications. Tracy has been featured on the Today Show, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe, CNNnews.com, and Essence Magazine. She is a former real estate agent and teaches realtors how to work safely and protect the consumer. Tracy, welcome. Hi there. Good to be here. Do you have any comments for the audience at the beginning here? You know, I do. I am a professional <laughs> speaker. <laughs> um, I, I just want to make sure everyone understands that you can no longer believe what you see, what you hear, and what you read with the um, introduction of generative artificial intelligence exactly uh, about a year ago when ChatGPT burst onto the market. Um, those tools are out there, people are using them, but the more important thing is cyber criminals are using them. And from the poll questions, um, every single one of those from phishing to the voice deep fakes, um, short term plant scam, all of those are touched by artificial intelligence. And most people don't understand what it is, so that's my job. I'm here to tell you that it is here, and cyber criminals are using those tools. Yeah, it's really scary as you start learning about uh, the impact that AI may have. Uh, not only you know, society can be a great benefit to society, but there, are, like any technology in, uh, improvement, there are some dark sides. And uh, you know, just in the last year. You know, I've heard some stories about how AI, AI can be used uh, in the fraud world, and it's it's you know for example, and you may mention this later on, but you know take a, a two second clip of somebody's voice and turn it into you know uh, a phone conversation that someone who you know can actually you know think it's you, and that's really scary. So we can get into some of those questions today. Um, so thanks thanks everyone for joining us. We have a great panel here, a lot of expertise. Uh, I'd really like to get into the question and answer uh, portion of the agenda. And while we're uh, getting questions in on the chat box, let me let me throw out a couple of questions to get things started. So I'm gonna start with first with Lori and ask you, you know, what are the main types of uh, fraud that you see uh, both in your current position and uh, in your prior experience? Um, there's a lot of things out there and, and many of them come back to some of the, the main, main points. Um, one of those is a non-delivery scam where you think that you've ordered something, um, you pay your money in and you think that you've got Christmas presents coming for your grandkids and you never get the items. So we that's something that can be seen um, through emails that might be sent to you um, that are advertisement type emails um, that really aren't advertising from the actual company that you think it's from. Um, same goes for Facebook, other social media. Um, you can see advertisements and marketing that happens in in those areas that is trying to get you to, um, to buy their product, but there's no product there, there to buy. Right. Um, there's auction fraud where you, you think that you are getting a certain product, but it was misrepresented on the auction site. Um, and gift card fraud is a, a prevalent item as well um, in, in many ways, one of which is um, a seller might ask you to pay them with a, a prepaid gift card instead of um, through other normal means of, of payment. 
and that is their way to to get the money to them. They can pull that money off of those gift cards without any type of tracing um, that we can do to to identify them. Uh, and then you still don't get your product. So yeah. those are the primary things that that for the holiday season that um, to really be looking out for. Yeah, no question. Online shopping scams, which you referenced. Uh, I think you talked about package scams where, you know, delivery, uh, you bought a product, never, never showed up or a uh, package scam where you get texts and emails saying, Hey, you have a, a delivery coming, but we need more information from you. And you click on a link. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on at this time of the year. We do have a question um, from someone uh, in the audience, Tracy and Fenton, and I'm going to uh, read the question and then uh, ask one of the panelists to answer. My mom was impacted by a publisher's clearinghouse scam, which resulted in her buying a gift card at a specific location where the funds were pulled electronically. What can she do to recover her lost funds? Amy, you want to take that one? Um, if this happened 20 minutes ago, I would tell her to call the number on the back of the gift card and see if she can stop the funds. Unfortunately, if it did not, um, you still need to report it, and you can report it to your local law enforcement. You can report it to ic3.gov. But at that point, um, you know, unless some crazy thing happened, which I've seen before, um, and the criminal did not drain the funds off of the gift card, the money is gone. Um, so first, call the number on the back of the gift card because you still should have it and see if there's any funds on it. Highly doubt it file a report with your local law enforcement or your ic3.gov. You know, regardless of the money is not coming back, it's crucial that you report it. You know, Lori and her team at the FBI, they need to hear about these types of frauds. That's how we get the good data and that's how we know these scams are happening. Um, unfortunately, Publishers Clearinghouse imposter scams are still in our top 10. I'll never forget 20 years ago when I first started or however long ago. Um, that was one of my first victim phone calls that I took was a Publishers Clearinghouse imposter scam. Um, they're very rampant and so we still need to get, even with all all the increases in technology, we still need to get the word out about these so-called legacy scams that have been happening forever. Right. Yeah. The other question, what are the steps a person should take if someone has used their social security number to submit a federal tax return? How long does it take to resolve that type of fraud? Lori, have you seen that before? And what kind of guidance can you give? Yes, that there's quite a bit of that going on as well. Um, the, the main thing for you to do is again, the same as what Amy said, contact your local law enforcement and, and make a report there. But also the, um, the IRS has a criminal investigations team and they, they've researched these as well. So I would contact the IRS and, and, and let them know what they have. They can then get that information over to one of their criminal investigators. It could very well be that your information has also um, that was stolen is also being used by these scam artists on other multiple victims, and and you're part of a larger a larger scheme. And so, being able to report that um, not only helps you, but it also helps the um, the agents that are working these scams to be able to see just how much um, fraud is has been. Um, perpetrated by these in individual yeah. artists. Sure. Yeah, and if I could just jump in there, I, Lori, I'm sorry if you mentioned this, but if you know that they have your social security number, which I'm assuming they do because of the tax form, I would go ahead and put a fraud alert on your credit report. And then, and that's a quick and easy step that you can do within five minutes. And then once kind of everything else has um, calmed down, then I would go ahead and put a freeze. Um, on your credit report. And a freeze you have to do with all three of the credit reporting agencies. So that's why I recommend a fraud alert first because it's just one phone call, you know, quick and easy. A freeze, I mean, here I am a fraud professional and I swear it took me like 45 minutes to put a freeze on because you have to do it with each one of the credit yeah. reporting agencies and you have to create a username, a password. But that is a surefire way, um, let me put that in quotes, that is a surefire way that no one can get into your credit report with your social security number. Not even you could open new credit until you saw it. And again, that all that information will come out in that email that uh, Dave and ARP is going to send you afterwards. But that's something yeah. I would do as well. So I want to follow up on that. 
uh, about the freeze and ask the, any of the panelists or all of the panelists, um, I'm beginning to read a lot of, um, you know, ex broad experts suggest that if, uh, regardless of whether you've been uh, a victim of fraud or not, that if you're not planning on purchasing a home or buying a car in a, in a near future, just go ahead and put a freeze on your account as a proactive, you know, preventative step. Do, do you do you recommend that, or do you think that's overkill? Anyone on the on the call? I certainly recommend it, Lori Tracy. I think I saw your heads nodding too. Tracy, yeah, I like to hear from Tracy. Tracy, what do you think? I, I agree. And one thing that I find is um, I, I get to talk to a lot of people as I travel. And a lot of times people think, oh, I, you know, I solved the problem so I, I can just move on. You know, you have to report it so that you can alert law enforcement so that they can let other people know. And as far as the freeze, it's a little bit of inconvenience, but imagine the nightmare if your identity gets stolen and how long it's going to take to fix it. So we have to um, endure a little discomfort in order to stay safe. Yeah. If I could add one more thing while we're talking about the social security is another thing that you can do to protect yourself is go to um, mysocialsecurity.gov and you can um, go on there and register yourself for an online um, ID that is attached to your social security number. This gives you um, online access to um, all of the resources at social security. Um, that they have, but it also allows you, if somebody has your social security number and they try to um, register for you before that you do, um, to try to get access and, and control of your social security number, basically, from an identity theft standpoint, um, that you've already taken that action, you've already um, got that ID, that password, you've got your, your social security number prote protected through that source. Um, so it, it's something that everyone should do, whether you're ready for social security or not, just go ahead and make your account with socialsecurity.gov so that, that you can, um, you can have access to their, to their tools and, and protect yourself that way as well. Yeah. A couple of personal stories here real quick, uh, on the, on the, uh, social security number and the tax returns. I, prepare, uh, I'm a tax counselor for AARP's tax aid, our free tax aid service. And uh, every every tax season, we do get a few people that come in and uh, without their knowledge, somebody has you know, co-opted their social security number. And then when we file the return, it you know blows up. Uh, so it's, it is definitely out there and, and you know, a lot of work, it takes a lot of work to you know, go back and undo that. Uh, and on the freeze, I'm actually here, I'm glad to hear the experts here suggest a proactive freeze and not overkill because I went earlier this year again proactive and I tell you it does work because then when I forgot I did that and tried to buy a car they came back and said oh no you can't buy a car <laughs> so it does work so I'm, I'm beginning to incorporate into my fraud presentations that hey you know maybe maybe the maybe the best plan of attack is to put a freeze in and then, you know, uh, deal with it if, if you forget. So anyway, I do, I do want to follow up on something Tracy said, because we have a, a question about this. It has to do with reporting. And Tracy, I'm going to come to you here. And the question is, is how big a problem is it when people who get taken by a scammer feel too embarrassed or think it makes them look dumb and uh, they don't want to report it? You know, what does this uh, make the numbers reported smaller than the actual level of fraud. It's underreported. And I talked to so many people who says, you know, especially when you get those robocalls, and that's that's a big problem. Um, all of us can attest to that. So even if you get a text message that has inappropriate images, a lot of times people just block it and then they move on. And that's when I'm saying, no, you have to let the provider, whether it's Gmail or your AT&T or your phone provider, you need to let them know that there was a problem so that they can do their jobs and take steps. Um, so often, like you said, we're embarrassed. But if we don't share it, it's not just about us. If we don't share it, law enforcement can't see patterns and they can't let everyone know that there's a problem and they can't address it. So um, put your pride in your back pocket and you need to speak up. Yeah, th that is certainly one thing you know, when we give fraud presentations, we really encourage people to speak up and they are very reluctant. And uh, AARP's research has shown that actually the, the older you are, the less, the more reluctant you are to report. 
because you feel like, well, you know, I should have known better. I'm experienced. In fact, a lot of people uh, don't even tell their family because they're so embarrassed. So this, we've got to get over this embarrassment. We have to report this so that we can let the authorities and others, you know, you may not get your money back, but you're kind of helping the greater good by letting uh, even local authorities know, hey, something's going on, you know, in your area. So, okay, we got a lot of questions. Thank you guys so much. Let me let me get through some of those here. Uh, how do scammers get our email addresses and phone numbers? There's something we can do on our end to prevent our info from getting out. Amy, I'll start with you and then other panelists chime in. I mean, I could easily say we'll stop giving it out um, because, you know, we yeah. give our information out on the daily, right? Whether we're signing up for coupons or whatever. But we also have to know that it's just, it's big business to sell our information. Um, you know, the DMV sells it, your credit bureau sells it. I mean, a lot of people sell our information. So, you know, definitely when you're signing up for something, you know, ask, how is my information going to be used, borrowed, sold, traded? Um, you know, I'm based in Colorado and today's our day of giving, right? And charities, you know, sell your information. But that doesn't mean that, you um, you you know are you can't stop it right so like some days i spend a whole hour just unsubscribing from emails or reporting them as yep. junk um yep. you know put your name on the do not call list people will say the do not call list doesn't work the do not call list does work for the purpose it's supposed to serve which is legitimate telemarketers from not calling you if you're on the do not call list and someone's still calling you and it doesn't fall into one of the four exemptions then that's a red flag that it's most likely a criminal or an unscrupulous company um, you know, use the technology that's in your device. Um, you can go into your phone settings and have any unknown number that's not in your contacts go directly to voicemail, right? I think that's a great thing that we can all do for some folks in our family, maybe this holiday season when we're gathered around, you know, sit down with their phones, set up their contacts, and then go in and make that, um, you know, on their device. So then any unknown go number goes directly to voicemail. Right. So even though like our information might be out there, doesn't mean that we can't stop the spread of it. And then we can't kind of take control back of it. Yeah. Right. OK, here's a comment from one of our audience members uh, and maybe the panelists can comment on this type of scam. The comment is beware of scams on romantic dating websites. And he was a victim. Uh, I'm sure each of you have had, you know, seen some of that. Tracy, thoughts on the rom romance scams, as we call them. That's where the artificial intelligence is coming in. In the past, it was a, a stock photo. So you could go to the Facebook page and you'll see a picture and they're like stock pictures of a person, you know, on the beach or yeah. at home. And you're looking, you're thinking something's not quite right. So with the um, invention of deep fakes, artificial intelligence, where you can um, go from text to image, cyber criminals can make headshots. They can make pictures of a person with their family. They can make great images that look real. You can't tell them from the false ones. And then also they can use the tools like the chat GPT, Bard Bing, to create content. Regular people, we can do it too. We can ask it to write a uh, blog post, write a series of social media posts, one a day, um, to write letters, email. So think about a cyber criminal who can use those tools and create a, a whole Facebook persona that you look at and you have no idea because it looks good, it sounds good. So you can't believe what you see. So that's when you have to do some extra uh, research. And a lot of people think, oh, I don't believe in it. It's not happening. The problem is you don't know. You have no idea. Um, I saw where Tom Hanks and Gail King had deep fakes of them out there. And people were looking, family members were calling. It's like, when did you start endorsing this product? Because they look so real. Um, the Pentagon, um, there was a deep fake this summer of the Pentagon exploding. And the news people put it on and they forgot to bet it. So we're looking at the smoke in the Pentagon. It was a deep fake. So you can no longer believe what you see. And the one that scares me a lot is a Ukrainian president doing a, a video on YouTube saying, hey, soldiers, lay down your weapons. The war is over. You couldn't tell that it wasn't real. So I, I really want people to start questioning what you're looking at. I don't say live in a paranoid manner. I just say question everything because cyber criminals are using these tools and they just don't care. Yeah. Amy, have you run across the romance scams much in your work? 
I mean, romance scams are in our top five. I think we had four in our helpline yesterday. Um, they've been around forever. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's a combination of everything. I mean, one, you know, we are kind of an isolated and lonely society and certainly the pandemic didn't help. Um, we are human beings that want connection, um, companionship and love. Um, and everything is turning, you know, online. Again, we we call these things phones, but honestly, when was the last time any of us made a phone call on it, right? We don't talk to people anymore on the phone. So let's just call them what they are, mini computers. Right. But the fact that we have these in our pockets and our purses 24 seven, it's opened up the world to criminals to meet us there. Um, and so they can ping you on WhatsApp at all hours and tell you how beautiful you are and who doesn't wanna hear that. Um, but I'll say the one interesting thing we're seeing with romance scams now is they're not just happening on dating sites, they're happening on social media, they're happening on fan club sites, maybe you all like, you know, old fashioned cars, someone reaches out to you and says, let's go to a show together, you know, or whatever it is. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of cryptocurrency investment scams get caught up into the romance scams. Um, first, you know, you're just having a conversation about what you guys like to do for fun. I mean, that's normal, right? Like, oh, I like to play golf. Oh, I dabble in crypto. Oh, crypto, that's interesting. Oh, I can teach you. Here's a link. Uh, my aunt's actually a professional. So we're seeing them come in all these ways. All I have to say about any of these scams, honestly, is it doesn't matter if there's a hundred scams out there and knowing all the nuances of them. What they want are a couple of things. Your Medicare number, your social security number, money paid via peer-to-peer -peer app like Venmo Cash App Zelle. They want money paid via prepaid gift card or money paid via crypto ATM machine or cryptocurrency. Sure, you can add cash on there as well. But honestly, if you hear any of those requests, just stop. Just 100% stop and check it out. It doesn't matter yeah. what scam, how it started. If you hear one of those things, just stop. Well, that's great advice because I was getting ready to ask, well, with all this scamming going on on romance, uh, romance scams, like how do you protect yourself? Uh, and I think maybe you just answered is, ultimately they lead to what you just said and that's when you need to pull back and say hey wait a minute you know what am i doing i have a question here and i'm going to direct it to Lori. and this type of fraud has been around well probably 40 50 years who do you report credit card fraud to besides the credit card company you know that you need to do a couple of things you need to report it to obviously the credit card company. If, if it's something that is prevalent, go ahead and report it to your local law enforcement as well. Um, but also we've al already mentioned the IC3.gov. Um, go ahead and report it on there as well because this credit card fraud could also um, be tied into something else that, that we are already investigating, something that's probably bigger than just, you know, you, you see what is your small piece of the, of the scam, but it may be a piece of, of a larger a larger scam. So right. go ahead and put right. it on ic3.gov. That allows us to um, link that into anything else that it might be related to, but it also allows us to track that and be able to see what the trends are and, and where we need to focus um, on, on those types of, of frauds. And then can I jump in? Yes, um, please. I see a question where someone said, how do scammers get our email addresses and phone numbers, and is there anything that we can do? Um, we give it to them. Um, everyone says, this is free, sign up for this free download or sign up for this free gift, and we freely give them our phone numbers and email addresses. Those can get sold on the dark web to criminals. Um, one thing you can do is have a cloud-based phone number that is not tied to you. So that could be a Google phone number. So no one can look you up on a cloud-based phone number because your information sits on a server and it's not tied exactly to you. Keep in mind that um, Gmail is the most hacked email account. So free email accounts are just uh, criminals' best friends. So if you have a business, you should be using a domain email. And then someone also asked if you should click to unsubscribe. Don't click anything. I, I will not click anything because if you click right. on subscribe, you could be downloading malware or a virus. So just go out of the system. But what you should do is you should report those um, as spam or phishing to your email provider so that they will understand. But if right. something is free, we're the product. That's right. 
So here's a question, a comment and a question from uh, Amber in St. Louis. It says, last week I received a text from Home Depot saying that my pickup order was ready. Uh, I didn't order anything, so I deleted the text. Another one came in and I called the store you know, to verify. The store didn't have any record of the order. And so I deleted the text and reported it as junk. What else should I have done? Amy? Patted yourself on the back uh, <laughs> yeah. for, for being a great fraud fighter. You know, we get those all the time, um, especially right now with the holidays. I think you're going to get more of them because, you know, we're kind of in this frantic mode. I, you know, I got to get the presents wrapped. I got to hang up the lights. I got to cook the dinner. All of a sudden you get this text that says, hey, your order at Home Depot is ready for pickup. You're like, oh, my God, what? I didn't order anything from Home Depot. I better call this number that's included in the text. Next thing you know, you're just basically calling the criminal who's going to say, oh, well, I can help you with that. Let me remote access into your device or I can work it out for you, whatever it is. Um, Amazon, PayPal, eBay, those are all happening right now in the same thing. Um, I would definitely, again, delete the text. Do not um, you know, click on any links that are in that uh, text message. And I would also, um, you can go into your phone and in settings, you can have any text message be filtered. So any unknown text message that you get that is not part of your contacts again can go into kind of a spam unknown text folder. I think what that does, it kind of raises a little flag that just says, hey, Amy, this person's not in your contact list. So when you respond to this, kind of have your defense mechanisms already up um, as a warning. And then obviously um, tell your friends and family about it as well. Tell them, hey, I got this crazy Home Depot text. You know, I just want to let you guys know about it as well. A lot of great questions coming in. There's a, there was a question uh, that we answered on the chat, but I want to verbalize it. Uh, the question was, uh, will this webinar be available to rewatch later? Uh, absolutely, we'll send the link uh, to this recording. You can also look at it on AARP Missouri's YouTube channel. And we do encourage you to uh, you know, send the link to your, your friends, uh, your family. Uh, again, our purpose here is get this information out. We know we're dumping a lot of information on you. You may feel a little bit overwhelmed, but you know, hang in there. There's a lot of good tips that, again, you can rewatch it and maybe take some notes. Um, we're talking with three experts here who've probably collectively have seen it all, and they're giving us some great uh, advice. I want to go back up to the questions because I think we missed one. Uh, let me see what. Oh, ha actually, had to go back. Had to do with freeze uh, credit freeze. I want to. I want to get back to this. It says concerning the credit freeze. Do some of the credit agencies charge you to take the freeze off? And they didn't charge me. I, do you guys, have you ever seen a credit agency charge you? It may, it may not be legal to charge. It's not. They used to charge um, depending on what state, but now every uh, thaw, okay. if they call it, is free. And you yeah. can pick how long. I know this, like just like you, Dave, getting a car. I know you can um, specify how long you want it to be thawed. So what I do is I check with the creditor who's going to be checking my credit or yep. opening it up and say, when are you going to check it? And they're like, oh, we're going to check it Friday. So then I say, okay, to the credit agency, I want it thawed for three days right. and then automatically refreeze it. I will say it was pretty simple for me to unfreeze um, because when you go to the, uh, the credit bureau's website, there's a right on the front, I think it said, you know, unfreeze your credit. And then the only thing that you have to have is when I set up a freeze, they had given me some kind of code or password. And uh, I keep a lot of that stuff in a, in, a, in a safe place. So I knew where to go find it. If you forgot that, you do, you do have to go through some hoops. So, you know, if you're, you need to be a little bit organized, but I, I'm really beginning to think that uh, given everything we've talked about today, you know, putting a freeze may really be a, a great thing uh, to do as a proactive uh, measure. Okay, let's keep going. So Tammy asks, I have called Apple for assistance and they asked to remote access my device. Is this safe? Tracy? If you call them and it's a known number, then yes it is. Um, that's how you get the remote work done on your, um, your devices. It could be your laptop or your phone. However, if they reach out to you, 
that's a no-go. So if you reach out and you know it's um, legitimate, then it's perfectly fine. That's how a lot of tech work gets done, but you just have to be extra careful. And before I forget, uh, we can't have this conversation without talking about passwords. Um, <laughs> passwords are the, the, the old, old way to do things. No more passwords. Passwords are easily hacked. Um, Pass phrases are great, or pass keys are even better. And that's where Google can say, you know, a pass key could be its AI biometric, your thumbprint, it could be your iris or your face. And that's the only way to get into your account. I have a twin sister. So we thought that we would play a little game. And we tried the, the thumbprint and she could not get into my phone. So think about it. That's the most secure way to protect your device. Yeah. I put a website um, on in the chat. It's called haveibeenpwned.com. And it's there's no vowel between the P and the W. What I want everyone to do, that's your homework, is to enter your email address or your phone number after we're done today. And then sit back and watch for a list of websites that you have visited that have had uh, security breaches with your password. So they're saying um, from Salesforce to Canva to Poshmark, they're saying these devices, th these websites have had a security breach and your um, password is on the dark web, you must change them now. First time I did it, there were 13. The second time, 28. So you need to take the time to, to change it because that means that your password is on the dark web and that's where cyber criminals shop and that's how your identity gets stolen. So everyone, please do that homework assignment as soon as we get done today. So I have a question for you uh, and this is uh, going back a while, but about 10 years ago, consumers re Consumer Reports, which I subscribe to, did an article on the uh, the, the credit uh, credit monitoring services, and uh, you know the ones you sign up for you know ten bucks a month or twelve bucks a month, and they purportedly do all these things for you. And at the time, uh, Consumer Reports said, eh, "I don't know if it's worth it." You know, you can do all the kind of same things on your own. But fast forward to today, and uh, I, I subscribe to a credit service through my previous employer, so I get a discount rate. Doesn't cost that much. I find it does a really good job of notifying me, you know, on different things, and so I find it, you know, worth the money. What do you guys think? Are these credit monitoring services worth the eight or ten or twelve bucks a month? Amy. You know, I think we have to make these decisions all day in our life. Is it worth it for me to have someone come to my house and clean it? Or can I clean it for myself for free? I choose to clean my own house for free because um, I'd rather take that money and spend it on someplace else. Someone like myself um, who, you know, kind of knows the ins and outs of fraud every day, I do not subscribe to a credit monitoring service because one, my credit, it, my, you know, report is frozen. It is right. frozen and I know it's frozen. Two, I can go in and check it if I want to by getting an annual free credit report. Um, I know what credit cards I have open. Um, I know how to look, you know, for suspicious mail or things like that. But if you have the 20 to $30 and you want to pay for that peace of mind that someone is doing that job for you, then just do your research and find the correct one that works for you. But also know that um, there's a lot of marketing behind these, right? There's a lot of marketing. No one can go on the dark web and scrub your personal information from there. They can say, yeah, you're on the dark web. We're all on the dark web, right? So just go with eyes wide open and do your research. I mean, Lori, Tracy, I don't know if you have other opinions on that. No, I, I would agree with you on that. Um, it, it's a matter of what what do you feel comfortable taking care of yourself? You know, if, if you have that comfort level, um, absolutely just keep an eye, um, keep your eyes wide open. But if you feel like um, you you need that self-assurance that somebody else is helping you to keep yourself safe, then then I don't see a problem with that as well. Tracy, I'd love to hear your comments on that. I fully agree. And I, yeah. I don't understand why you would need that if you have your credit report frozen. No one can do anything, so save yeah. yourself the money. Yeah. True, good point. Somebody just mentioned uh, the annual credit report. We have a question. Should we get the annual report each year? Lori? Um, I, I say, why not? It, it's free. The, the, the key thing to, to do is to make sure that you are actually getting the real free annual credit report. Because if you Google annual credit report, you will get several websites 
that um, say that they are the annual credit report, but then as you get further right. into the site, they're, they get you to give them their your credit card information as, as a verification or a protection. And so you really want to make sure that you use the right website. Amy, maybe you remember off the top of your head what the proper um, annual credit report website is. Um, I don't remember that one off the top of my head. Yeah, annualcreditreport.com. And up at the uh, left-hand corner, it'll say the only authorized one by the federal government. So look for that. But to Lori's point, when I talk to, um, to victims or people who want to go get it, whether they're doing it online or over the phone, I just keep saying, if anyone says money, say, I want the free, I want the free, I want the free. And if you find yourself inputting your credit card information in there, you got bypassed through one of the screens. So that's really great that Lori mentioned that. Yeah. So I, I actually heard something new earlier this year that I guess I could have thought about, but I didn't, uh, that for, for, the, uh, for the overachievers in the audience on the annual credit report, rather than asking for you know a report from each of the three you know at the same time spread it out over the year because you get one free from each one so do like a spring summer fall and that way you've got you know you're kind of getting into the habit of periodically checking your credit report as opposed to you know once a year that probably is overkill and again that's why i said it's for overachievers but you know i thought it was that was interesting uh, my guess is most people you know have so many things to do they're not thinking about that but i thought it was an interesting uh, interesting little trick um okay here's a question i had or a comment i had an e actually both i had an email hacked i contacted the company changed the password then eventually changed the email address should i still be wary of the old account address tying to me tracy i i am not understanding that question if you deleted the old e email address and you don't know if it's if there's anyone doing anything so if you deleted it um then i, I don't see where the, there could be a problem okay amy sorry coming off mute is not my specialty um you contact the company you change the password um yeah i mean i think you're fine i i guess i'm not missing where the the fear would be on honestly like i probably have 10 email addresses they're all fake you know like because i'll put them in for like shopping things mm -hmm. and stuff um and they're not really tied to me there's not much that someone could do with an old email address i'm just trying to think about the fraud perspective if you've cleaned out your address book you know if that was hacked and they got your you know contacts but other than that i don't really see that there's much of a risk there Okay, here's a here's a question. I'm going to direct it to Lori about emails from the Best Buy Geek Squad yearly fee of four hundred ninety eight dollars. Uh, I, I assume that that was an invoice. I went to Best Buy and they said, no, that's not us. Delete the email. Um, you know, doesn't tell you who to pass the scam mail on to. Or, you, know, you just delete it and you're done. Uh, it says I forwarded it to the Missouri Attorney General's office. You know, what else should I have done with this? Um that that's a great way to go to uh, uh, coming back to the ic3 uh anything like that let us know through ic3.gov it's the internet complaint crimes internet mm -hmm. crime complaint center um that's where we get our information on the these sorts of of scams mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it comes back also to what we've been saying um is if there's something you did the right thing, you actually went to Best Buy and double checked it. You, you, you don't click on the links in the email. You don't call the numbers in the email. Go back to you know the resources that you know. Go back to the company itself. Double check, verify before you, you take any action. So that that was that was the right thing to do both on protecting yourself and and um, reporting it was still a, a good way to take care of that. Yeah. Okay, I've been waiting for this one. I'm gonna direct it first to Tracy. Uh, what about Facebook? I had that hacked. The account is still there, but someone else has control. 
I have a new account. Should I worry about the old Facebook account? They can send friend requests and um, questions from the old account. So that is something that you, a lot of people say, hey, friends, my account has been hacked. Don't respond to anything from my old Facebook account. You can do that. Some people are going to miss that. Um, so you can work with Facebook to see if you can have that. Just You can delete it. You have an option to completely delete it. But without the password, that may um, involve some extra work. But otherwise, it is a danger because criminals yeah. um, can send out requests and information um, from that account. So you need to work to get that deleted. Yeah, I I just... say, Facebook is just horrible. Uh, that's my personal opinion, um, but that's the opinion of many victims out there. I see that Tammy just wrote in Facebook has had sent no replies. It is crazy to me, and this goes back to Tracy's point. If it's free, you're the customer. Um, Facebook is free. They they have if you follow their protocols and you still can't get this hacked Facebook page down or whatever this profile is. They don't, I'm sorry. And this is just, they don't really care. This comes from precedence. Uh, Lori, I don't know if you've had a different experience, but I, this uh, is I a have, struggle. I have had some experience with this. We have, um, I have a brother who passed away a year ago and his, um, his Facebook profile was basically co-opt. Um, they took it over and we have taken so many um, um, attempts to try to reach out to Facebook to get that account deleted, to get it memorialized. Um, it, and it's very difficult because they're still out there actively using that. My um, brother who, who's still with us just a few months ago received a phone call from an individual who had been trying to reach Roger because he had tried to sell him something on Facebook Marketplace. He had sent the money to Roger, my brother, um, and was trying to figure out how, how to get his product that he had bought. And so he knew from the, from the Facebook, the town that my brother was in, found another, found, found our brother for, with the same last name and said, hey, do you know how I can get a hold of him? Because he's not answering me to mm -hmm. let me know where I can pick up my my product and you know my brother who's still with us said i'm he you know i'm sorry you've been scammed um so it it is it's very prevalent and it's it can happen you know my my brother lived in a small town of 1600 people and they somehow as soon as as soon as all of this happened his, his his Facebook profile was co-op. So it is something that you have to be very um, attuned to. And and um, you hate to say this, but trust no one and verify everything. And I take it that uh, given the you know, sheer number of people on Facebook that uh, the authorities just don't have the manpower to intercede on behalf of the uh, consumer and put pressure on Facebook to do something on individual cases. They probably just don't have the manpower to deal with that is that correct hey one thing that you can do is yeah. set up a legacy um, a legacy contact i did that with my sister it's like if something happens to me you are my legacy um, contact so you will automatically be able to log in and shut down my account because i i don't want to be one of those people getting birthday wishes and thinking of you when i'm not here so you can appoint a legacy contact who can shut it all down and that's something you need to do today a great comment uh, my father just did that uh with me Okay, let's keep going on. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Thank you guys so much. This has been great. Uh, a lot of great questions. It, okay, it says Nancy. Nancy asks, "Have I? Ha I have had messages pop up on my computer screen saying I should click on the link within 20 seconds to prevent a virus from being downloaded on my computer. I have never clicked, but I find these alarming. Anyone else seen these? Tracy shaking her head. Give us some advice, oh. Tracy. Don't click anything. anything. I have a motto. I say pause, stop, and think. Before you click anything, before you download anything, just pause for a moment and think about it. Go to the account. If it's a PayPal text message, hey, your password has been jeopardized. Click here to reset it. Pause. Go to the PayPal account and see if there's an issue. So pause, 
stop and think. No clicking, no downloading. I don't click anything anymore. So that's the simple, easy solution. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, most of us now, unfortunately, have, you know, we can't answer our phone calls anymore because, you know, 30 or not 30, 80 percent of them are scam calls or robocalls. Uh, you're right. You just can't click. You can't click on links. You just can't do it. Uh, okay, great question here. If there is a padlock in the address bar, does that mean anything anymore? Are these considered? Are these still considered safe sites, Amy? I mean, it depends on what you're doing with them because I can certainly get a padlocked icon and put it on a fake website. Um, and so, if you're asking, like, let's say you're on a, a website or a vendor that you know, you're on Delta.com, not DeltaFly.com or any of the imposter websites out there, um, and you see the HTTPS and you see the padlock, what that basically is saying is it's a secured site when you're transmitting your credit card information through it and it'll be sent encrypted. And I said credit card, not debit card. So always use a credit card when you're shopping online. But if you're doing a Google search for, you know, Nike Pro sneakers and you find a website um, that has the most popular shoes and all the colors and all the sizes and you want to purchase it for your grandson for Christmas and it has the padlock, it ha might have the padlock and it might have your credit card encrypted, but that doesn't mean you're getting the shoes. So it kind of depends on what your question about the safety is. It does not mean that it's legit though. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I have a question here, um, and I'm going to direct it to Amy again. So ARP hears from a lot of people every day who report scams in or calls in to ask for help. Um, what, what are the common things you're hearing from them, uh, about either the types of scams or the kind of help they're looking for? Um, a lot of people are looking to know that they're not alone, obviously. Um, this might be the first time in their life that they've ever been a victim of any sort of crime, right? And they're scared and they're confused and they want that human connection to know that it's going to be okay. Um, a lot of people are just calling to report it. We love hearing from people who just want to report it. Like, I got this telephone call. I just want ARP to know. With 35 million members across the country and one of the largest circulated, if not the largest circulated um, publications, we do have a pretty good megaphone to let people know about the scams that are going on. Um, but we have trained fraud specialists across the country. We have 200 that will work alongside any victims of fraud. They'll give them certainly the empathy and guidance that they need. Um, they'll be a great listening ear, but then also they'll give them the steps. They'll say, go to IC3.gov. Um, they'll tell them to report it to their local law enforcement. They'll encourage them. They'll say, I know Lori from Kansas City. She's fantastic. She wants to hear from you because a lot of older people think that the FBI has bigger fish to fry than their fraud problem. That's not true. I know the FBI wants to hear from you. They want these complaints. Um, but I'll just tell you quickly, imposter scams, romance scams, sweepstakes scams, business imposter scams, pet scams are always popular this time of year too. Um, but that's really what we're hearing on the helpline. Okay. And Dave? Yes, please. I see, a question. I see a question in there about jugging, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about, so I'm glad that uh, you asked the question. Uh, bank jugging is happening now. I saw a story where in California, a person was in the bank making a withdrawal. She got out $20,000 for whatever reason. It's her money. Who are we to judge? And then she went to the mall. I'm looking at the video of people who followed her from the bank to the mall, and then they stole her money. So that is happening often. I was just in a convenience store the other day, and you know how loud the machines are when it counts out the money? And I, there's a guy just there just counting the money, just coming out, coming out, and it's like, oh, gosh. And he's just focused on the machine. You need to look around and pay attention. So criminals are following people from the bank, um, from ATM machines. They're going to your um, intended designation, whether it's a, a mall or home, and they're stealing your money. So you need to be alert and aware look around, pay attention, especially knowing that these crimes exist. Um, education is half the battle. Look right. for someone who is sitting there, maybe just um, watching who are, who's not um, in, interactive, who's not going to the machine, who's just sitting there and then watch and see if they follow you oh. when you leave. So pay attention. And people always say, well, drive to a police department. 
I don't know if you've driven by a police department, but there's typically no one outside. Yeah, um, no. So you need to be very careful. Um, although police departments now have a pickup, if you order online, they say come to the police department and exchange, uh, you know, your purchases and sell things. So they do make a space and those are um, on camera. So mm -hmm. maybe a police department in that situation, but you, you must pay attention and you must look around. Don't have your heads in your devices because criminals are watching us. Yep. So we've got a few minutes left. One more question here. Uh, it's a great question. Are all the Alexa Wi-Fi items safe in our homes? Amy. I mean, it depends on what you can say is safe. Um, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day, actually using my phone. And I was like, maybe we don't want to talk about this in front of Alexa. Um, so, I mean, I use Alexa to find out what the weather is, and I tell Alexa, hey, Alexa, play country music, right? I mean, that's what I use it for. Um, I don't use it for anything else. I'll tell you where we're seeing some of the Alexa, you know, Google Assist scams are when um, a consumer says, hey, Alexa, what's the phone number for Southwest Airlines? Um, dial it for me is, you know, with the algorithms and the SEO in place, oftentimes they'll take the top number that is in the search results, which can be a sponsored phone number, which could connect yes. to the criminal. There's a lot of fake customer service um, phone numbers online. So I would definitely never ask Alexa to do that. I, for me personally, I just use it for the entertainment value of it. I don't use it okay. for anything else um, because I just, that's just not who I am, or do I want my information in some little thing that has a personality? I mean, Lori, Tracy, I don't know if you have any other opinions on these devices. As long as you understand that there's no such thing as privacy, um, Amazon employees are sitting in the center somewhere listening to you. So that's why when you're talking about umbrellas and then all of a sudden your ads are all umbrellas, uh, you can toggle that off on your Alexa settings because they're telling you this is going to make your experience better. So we will listen in on occasion and then you will see those um, the microphone open up or the camera open up and think, what? And then keep in mind, if it's free, you are the product. So if you download free apps, any of these tools, you're telling them, I give you permission to listen in, to see my contact list, to access my camera, to access my uh, microphone. So no such thing as privacy. Okay, I think we could probably go on for another hour with questions, but this has been a great interactive session. I wanna give each of our wonderful panelists, you know, 30 seconds, any final, final comments or suggestions for the audience, Lori? Um, thank you for letting me be a part of this. I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I just want to remind everybody to um, be safe this holiday season. Um, trust, trust, but verify. Um, check everything. Don't hit the links and don't be afraid to stop. Take a breath and research and make sure that what you're looking at really is what it appears to be because it, it yeah. may not be. Tracy? Um, you can't believe what you see, what you hear, and what you read, especially in the age of AI. Um, keep in mind that the bad guys can uh, do a deep fake impersonation of a voice. And those grandparent scams, it's the real voice now. So they're calling, hey, grandma, grandpa, can you send me money? Don't tell mom and dad. It's the actual voice. It could be a business associate, someone asking for something, gift cards or anything. If they're asking for information, you need to double check it. So knowing that criminals are duplicating voices and making phone calls, you are now on alert. Um, they can create pictures. So if you're going to do an Airbnb, um, double check your picture, make sure it's real, especially if they said, come off the platform, I'll give you a, a discount. You could be looking at a deep fake picture that does not exist anywhere. So right. take generative AI seriously uh, because cyber criminals are. Yep. Amy. Um, Lori stole it right out of my mouth. People <sighs> breathe, just breathe. Take a breath. We are so busy. We act so fast. We have so much information that comes across our, you know, eyes and our brains. Um, but just take a breath anytime anybody is, again, asking you for personal information or money. They have no business asking any of that. So, you know, to Tracy's point with AI, you know, I told my mother, I don't care if you think it is your grandson who is 19 years old and probably would ask for money. If he's asking for money, especially in crypto, prepaid gift card or Venmo, stop, hang up the phone and call me because first of all, yeah. I shouldn't be asking you for that money. Um, but just breathe people and just know that, that, you, that you have the tools, you have the education, so you have the power to fight all of these. Great, thank you. So we're gonna close out. I wanna thank everyone 
for taking part in our uh, webinar today. Lori, Tracy, Amy, thank you so much. You just have a wealth of information uh, that you've shared with us. And I, I would just end by saying that, you know, keep AARP Fraud Watch uh, in your thoughts. It's a great way to learn about the most effective ways to protect yourself and your loved one. Almost all of the information we've talked about today is uh, embedded in the various information uh, on the Fraud Watch Network. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to go to our website at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork, and you'll just find a, a treasure trove of information. And if you think uh, something might be a scam or you've been a victim of scam, don't hesitate to call AARP's uh, Fraud Watch helpline at 877-908. 3360. And as Amy mentioned, we have trained volunteers ready and waiting to help you uh, take the next steps. So thank you all for participating. If we didn't get to your question today, we will uh, try to get to it as we email out uh, all the information. So thank you and everyone have a great day. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.